Okay. Sorry about that. It's just a small screen here. I apologize. Uh, again, Robert Kelly, VP Technology Enablement with Liatrio. Uh, it didn't look like I could enable technology very well there for a minute. I apologize. Thank you. This is, a, this is exciting to me. Uh, uh, this is the first time I've been able to speak at, at uh, really anywhere, DevOps Days for sure. Uh, DevOps Days has been just huge for me. The community has been amazing. I've uh, been uh, attending DevOps Days for about, uh, well, as long as they've been around. I'm OG DevOps Days DFW uh, attendee. That's uh, uh, original grapevine, right, for you folks who, uh, we got a few OGs around here, that's cool. Um, and I, I think, it really, it's, it's just been, it's pretty, it's pretty special to me, so I'm excited to be here. Um, like many of us here, uh, DevOps ha has, uh, well, we've evolved with DevOps, our careers have evolved with DevOps, uh, and uh, really, it's kind of coalesced recently around the idea of platform engineering and platforms. And uh, I, think, I think that's what I want to dig in today uh, with. So today, uh, I'll talk about why platforms must be small, regardless of their size. This is a little bit of a nod to uh, uh, our grandmothers out there who say, uh, say things like, oh, sh he sure is tall for his height, and, and things like that. That's uh, a wise words from gran grandma, or, or, or granny's just nuts. Uh, anyway, so let's get into that. Uh, what is a platform? I think a good idea here is to level set what a platform is, uh, what I think a platform should be, and uh, I think, well, let's, let's use some uh, existing definitions that might be out there already. So uh, CNCF platform white paper says, a platform for cloud native computing is an integrated collection of capabilities defined and presented according to the needs of the platform's users. Uh, CNCF platform white paper is awesome. You should check it out if you haven't already. Uh, a lot of great people put a lot of time into that. It's, it's a great read. That uh, white paper also calls out uh, a quote from Martin Fowler. Uh, Digital platform is a foundation of self-service APIs, tools, services, knowledge, and support, which are arranged as a compelling internal product. I really like that. Uh, I think between the two of these definitions, again, both in the same uh, white paper, they, they kind of round out the definition of, of, of what a platform is. We'll use this today. We're talking about that. Uh, but from my perspective, what is an enterprise platform's goal? So we're talking about internal platforms here. I think overall, they will provide a better way to deliver value to our customers, provide a better way to deliver digital value to our customers. That's, that's I think, what the high-level goal is. And, uh, but does that mean that they're an easy button, right? If we're providing a better way to deliver a digital value, I don't think so. It isn't always easy right now. So why is that? Well, let's look at this from a perspective of what, uh, what the goal is internally. So if we're providing a better way to deliver digital value to our customers, uh, from a platform team perspective, uh, we're gonna provide a better way for our customers to, live, to deliver digital value, right? So uh, if I asked your customers, who are the developer teams, other engineering teams, other platform teams, uh, is the platform easy? What would they say? If I said, hey, is, is the platform, w would you rather just have access to AWS and, and just go for it, what would they say? I think we'll get some mixed, mixed uh, opinions on that one. So this is where I wanna talk a little bit about why I think successful platforms must also be disruptive technologies. So if, if your platform is gonna be successful, it needs to also be disruptive, and we'll talk about why that is here. So understanding this, uh, this really principle of what a disruptive technology is and why platforms are disruptive here is, is important. Um, here's an excerpt from uh, Clayton Christensen's Innovator's Dilemma. Uh, it's a great read if you haven't read that. Products based on disruptive technologies are typically cheaper, simpler, smaller, and frequently more convenient to use. Again, that might not be how we describe our platforms today, but I, I think it's uh, something to think about. So um, the, the bottom line here is our, we're providing a, a, an alternative here with our platforms. Uh, if, if you want to disrupt a market, a disruptive technology is gonna chisel away at a market share of a specific you know, product or, or other technology. And that's where our, our platforms are providing the most value here, is 
we're going to be looking at, at some of the things that we need to take away from, or you know, from the alternatives uh, that our dev teams are going to be doing. So if they're going to be, I promise they're going to ship their products to production, right? Uh, whether our platforms are there or not. And I think that's what we need to think about. So, well, if, if it's going to happen, we need to provide a better way. Uh, I think there's going to be some interesting uh, metrics and, and detail coming out in the next door report over in the next uh, few weeks about this, whether you can, uh, how teams are shipping with or without platforms. You should check that one out. So, ultimately, we're competing with any other alternative way to ship software. And that's where I think looking at how our platforms are disruptive is important. We're not going to necessarily take away market share from AWS, Azure, or other cloud providers. And we certainly want to provide a better way for our teams to, to access these cloud services. But uh, where our platforms are providing the most value is in how we're disrupting enterprise processes and other, other things that are just, just slow or happening within, you know, within the enterprise. And I think this is a great target for uh, showing where our platform's value are, right? So what are the things platform is disrupting? Just, just a list here. Uh, onboarding time for new engineers, sort of that, that time to first commit, time to second commit, time to get your code in prod. All of the golden, golden paths that need to be created so that, hey, we've got a clear path to prod uh, that otherwise not be there. Uh, all the ease of access to cloud or the development environments, really just giving ourselves uh, well, all of the CI CD processes, the, all of the DevOpsy things that we've been doing for a decade, this is not changing. Uh, all of the common builds, the uh, uh, shifting security left, all of the quality automation, change control board processes, this is huge with automated governance, I think is a, is a massive target for our platforms to automate. And these are just things that we're gonna be disrupting. They're happening. Teams are gonna be building software no matter what. They're gonna be shipping software with or without the platform, they're gonna be going through these slow enterprise, enterprise processes, a lot of manual uh, tasks, a lot of handoffs, but this is where we can disrupt, disrupt the, uh, the enterprise, really. So they have become disruptive. Platforms become disruptive, but I think in the wrong way. Uh, where, where, really, what does it feel like today? So how do we get here? I, I think this is Conway's Law. How many of you are Conway's Law understand? We've heard this. You'll hear it two or three or four times at, across every DevOps days. Uh, what does that mean? So uh, just for those who are not familiar, Conway's Law suggests that the way an organization or team is structured will heavily impact and influence the, uh, the products that they create. So, so for instance, if uh, an org is uh, uh, wants to pr create a product and it's split up into uh, three teams that are building a, building a project or working on a project, the resultant architecture of uh, the modules that it, you create uh, will rev reflect the boundaries of these teams. So, you know, effectively, you're going to create three different modules that uh, that hopefully work together. Um, so, how, how many of you are on a DevOps team today? Anybody, DevOps team, uh, working in a DevOps team, DevOps org, something like that? Uh, right, so we've spent a lot of time uh, growing and, and, and being, uh, over the past decade, really, on a DevOps team and a DevOps org, kind of consolidating a lot of our efforts uh, and building, really building these things that we'll call platforms. And uh, really, they've, they've, they've grown a lot. Right? The things that our DevOps team and our orgs are responsible for has continually grown and, uh, in, in size and scale. I think this is where we hear a little bit of, of cognitive load. Uh, this, this is getting a lot of attention, and I think that's because platforms have really become synonymous with tool sprawl and, and what that means. And I think just looking at this, uh, you're familiar with this. This is a CNCF landscape. And as DevOps engineers and DevOps teams and technology organizations, we really kind of have to keep track of this stuff. It's kind of uh, interesting. It's all, all of the, a lot of these tools are, are kind of uh, spinning in threads in our, in our heads as, as DevOps engineers. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a lot. Um, so the, the point here is our platforms have become uh, larger. There's been a little bit of a snowball effect and they've become a monolith, potentially, because we've got a, 
uh, a DevOps team or a DevOps, DevOps org that has consolidated the, uh, you know, all of these tools, and, and we're kind of managing it as, as one team or one org. And just like any other enterprise application, it's, it's grown over time. And uh, here's a little bit of uh, an opinionated view, some architecture of an enterprise platform. And we could talk about that uh, uh, later as well. Uh, these are the things that I'd say uh, are the capabilities in, in a platform. It's not an exhaustive list, but these are just some things to talk to and I think uh, is a good start. Um, if you see all of the CI CD pipelines, we talked about this, FinOps, governance, infrastructure, inf all the infrastructure is code, observability, uh, internal developer portals, uh, platforms, the way we access these tools and these, these, uh, these, other, these other capabilities, all of the things that, that go into creating uh, the software that we're, we're building are, are uh, facilitated by the platform. Now, this is where you say, well, we have teams or we have orgs that, that handle FinOps, that handle uh, different teams are, are working on governance and infrastructure and observability, and they're, and they're kind of all over the enterprise. Well, that's where this is, this is where we, we talk about platforms and platforms. And that's what our enterprise platform is. If these capabilities could become platforms over time, uh, we, we need to make sure that we're integrating them in a thoughtful way, just like the definition from Martin, Martin Fowler. We're, we're making sure we're, we're putting these, uh, these compelling uh, offerings in front of our users in a way that they can you know, they can use. So that's, that's important. So, so that is a lot, right? Uh, there's a lot that goes into our uh, enterprise platforms. I think it's, it's important to understand that we need to work together to make sure that they're, uh, they're providing that compelling product for, uh, for the teams that use them. It's too much for one DevOps team to manage. Uh, and I think uh, as, at scale, right? Sure, uh, you can get started and you want to get started, but you you know, ultimately, uh, as it scales, it might be too much, and that's where you break up the platforms of platforms and different platforms team, platform teams to own these things. This is where I get to say platforms must be small. So the platform should not feel large. It should not feel complex. It can't be 30 different ways to, uh, you know, onboard a new capability. If I'm a dev team and I've got to figure out a new way to adopt a, a, a tool or a process, it's just, it's just a lot, and, and it's probably gonna be uh, cumbersome, and they might not, may not do it. Uh, so all of these capabilities need to be thoughtfully arranged and inter integrated, and as we have these new capabilities introduced, we need to make sure that we, we're starting small so that the, the adoption of these new capabilities isn't, isn't met with resistance or friction. And this is where I get to talk a little bit about the thinnest viable platform. How, no, how many of you read the uh, team topologies, fans of team topologies? Awesome. Uh, this is an excerpt from uh, uh, team topologies. A TVP is a careful balance between keeping the platform small and ensuring that the platform is helping to accelerate and simplify software delivery for teams building on the platform. That's great. I mean, this is, this is uh, we need to start small. We need to make sure that we're giving teams just enough so that they can get started and get moving and see value. And this is that, back a little bit at call out, that disruptive piece there is like, hey, if something's small, it's gonna be easier to, to manage and easier to understand. On the left side uh, of the screen here is not a picture of a platform, but it's a picture of a team interaction model. So here you have platform team, and stream aligned teams, and all the, the delivery teams that are, that are building using the platform. But the platform team is providing something, a capability or another, uh, you know, an offering to the, to the users as a service. And what I wanna call out there is ultimately that, that the way we're providing those services to the teams needs to feel the same. So if you've got one, two, three, four platform teams or you're providing four, five, six services, as a service, self-service, whatever that may, might be, that needs to feel the same as we start to scale. So these platforms, if you have uh, several platforms working with teams in different ways, it's, it's, gonna feel, it's gonna feel cumbersome, right? Okay, this is where I get to start about uh, a, a little bit on why the platform needs to be a living product, just like that, uh, just like we were saying. So if we're building the, uh, these capabilities and offering them to users, well, well, how do we do that in a good way? 
uh, an effective way. Just going through some of these things, uh, standard product mindset here. Focusing on user-centric design, we gotta know our customers so that we can uh, make sure that they're gonna uh, uh, give us feedback and we can interface with them on a, on a potentially daily basis. We wanna make sure we have product uh, management capabilities. This is, these are things that every product team might have already. Uh, this is making sure that we have rapid development iteration. We have to understand that there's a difference between deployment and release, just like the products that, that are being shipped through our platform, right? We've gotta do the same thing for the, the platform tools and capabilities themselves. And we're gonna make sure that we're cross-functionally collaborating, building our, our platform teams uh, that, that, can, that understand what the platform is, is offering and at an enterprise level, they understand that they're working uh, to the same goal, providing the same type of service uh, for the users of the platform. And I'll say this again, this is super important. Uh, our common approach for integration, just how we bring our uh, capabilities to market inside the enterprise is, is huge. This, this, I don't think I can understate it. APIs and providing that, that common interface for bringing tools and capabilities to our teams it, is how we scale. It's how we can scale safely, effectively, and, and without a lot of cognitive load or resistance there. Uh, we've got to provide support for our, pro our product, uh, and that's, that's huge. Uh, calling out the original definition uh, from Martin Fowler there, we referenced originally. It's part of the platform. The support for your platform is, is part, of the, part of the deal. Um, we're going to market the platform. Uh, branding for your platforms is huge, and making sure everyone understands that this is a real product and, and we treat it just like anything else uh, it, that we're, we're building in our enterprise. And uh, finally here, measuring the success of our, our product here. Again, this is uh, all of the adoption the, uh, of the platform, the, the developer productivity, whatever we may be uh, calling that productivity might be with the lead time, cycle time, how they feel productive. And yes, that's, this is where we call out Dora metrics. Big fan of Dora. Uh, if you're not uh, looking at Dora metrics, we'll talk. We can argue, I'd love to argue. Uh, this is where we understand how the changes of our platform impact the users of, of the platform and the platform itself. We're gonna focus on the same metrics when we change our platform as we, uh, as we would if the developers were, were building, as, as developers or other en engineers are building their products. So all of the capabilities that we're looking at here, uh, all of the performance metrics and all of the outcomes, they're the same for our platform teams uh, we, we're measuring everything the same, and I think that's where we can find common ground, uh, bu building the products internally as, as we would do at other development, development teams. Uh, okay, so let me, let me wrap up here. Let me summarize some things and, uh, and land this a little bit. Uh, some of the successful platforms here, so if we wanna build successful platforms, they are small disruptive products. And, uh, again, we want to align on the goal of our platform. This is delivering value or digital value to our customers. Be disruptive. We got to remember that we're innovating and we want to create compelling alternatives for our customers so that they will use our products. We want to strangle the monolith, uh, make sure that uh, all our capabilities are, uh, are supportable and really modular. They can be their own platform and platform teams as they scale. We want to start small, that's the thinnest viable platform. Uh, build APIs and that common interface for integration is, is super important here. That platform's a living product. Uh, one of the big things I want to call out here is if you're not a customer of your platform, you're doing it wrong. So we have to be customers of the things we're building uh, to know and be able to reinforce that the value they're providing is, is something we can stand behind, so that's huge. And then we're gonna measure our, our, our success. And that's where we wanna understand all of the work to understand the impact uh, of the platform within the organization, continue to measure and, and get feedback. And uh, that's what I got. Thank you. How are we doing? Questions, lunch, what are we doing? Anybody have questions? You're like, no, thank you. I'd love to meet you later. Uh, and uh, 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 meet me in the hallway. Let's talk about anything I've presented or other things. I'd love to, uh, love to argue and continue these conversations. So great to meet you. Thank you for giving this opportunity.
Have a great day.